Good evening, boys and girls. It's Charlie with Hamilton Landworks. This is going to be a uh, multi part series. So each video I'm going to try to keep about five minutes long. Yeah, can you tell my eyes are bloodshot? Freaking tired. So today we were. Well, my crew was out doing a large leaf cleanup, and we've had some issues in the past. Here, let me pull up what we have on the computer, and I'll show you what's going on. I don't know if... The sound from this little heater here is like coming through the mic or not. I don't know. Um, let's see here. Now, our model is a little older than this. But I think this is accurate. Let me just look. Um, 13 horsepower. Yep. So this is it. So on the back of our dump trailer, we have one of these. Uh, it's a Billy Goat debris loader. I don't know if our model number is a DL1302H or not. I bought the thing used heavily used from another landscaping company um in north carolina and we've used it for about a season and a half and when i say heavily used like this this thing is it's beat up pretty good but it still ran it still ran still worked it, it did a good job um so we we just kept running it this year we've had some problems um We've had oil consumption. We've had no starts. Uh, we've been busting pull cords left and right. Um, I think I've put three pull cords on this thing in the course of a month. The engine's not happy. And, and it's wore out. It's a Honda engine. It's great. But it's, it's wore out and it's tired. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to pick up tomorrow. I'm going to go pick this up tomorrow. This is a 13 horsepower Predator engine from Harbor Freight Tools. And right there you can see all the SKU numbers. You can see all that. 60340. Um, the cool thing about this one is this right here. This thing has electric start. Isn't that freaking crazy? So the electric start let's see if the picture shows um it's got a starter here uh it doesn't show it but back here on the starter i think like right over here there's a tab this is where your positive lead is going to go and then you ground it to the case and it's got a stator it'll charge the battery so you, so you got to hook a battery up to it um, and you want to run this with a battery. You don't want your voltage coming out of your stator to just not go anywhere. Um, you want it to go to a battery, even if it's a dead battery, like, and you're pull starting this thing. You still want it to go to a battery. So what I'm thinking about doing, and this may be crazy, our debris loader is mounted on the back of our dump trailer on the door. Um, and we've done that because we have a lot of long driveways where we can actually back down the driveway and suck up the leaves as, as we're moving back. And I know the camera's all over the place. I'm sorry. I'm doing my, this with my phone. And I'm not looking at the camera. I'm looking at the screen. So I apologize about that. But you'll be okay. So our debris loader. I'll walk out here and show you. It mounts to the back of the trailer. And it's very dark, so 
bear with me a moment. Um, so it mounts to the back of our trailer and it's on the door. So I'm thinking that I can run battery cable leads from the front box where our battery for our actual uh, hydraulics to dump the trailer is back to the um, debris loader and kind of kill two birds with one stone. I can charge the dump trailer at the same time that I am using it for electric start for the debris loader. So it's, I, I don't know if it's going to work. Well, I know it'll work. The science is there, but practicality and getting it to work in our application is going to be another thing. So let me show you. Unfortunately, I didn't film pulling this thing off and tearing it down. And I apologize for that, but it was pretty simple. Um, so on the back of your case, you have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. You have six little studs here on the outside. Take those off with a 14 millimeter. That'll remove this plate. So then you're going to see this guy. This is your impeller. So in the center here, you have what I, I think is another 14 millimeter. Um, this guy here, this is standard thread. So lefty loosey. Pull that guy out. There's holes. There's four holes here. You'll spin that to access these four right here. Get those off of there. Um, the impeller is square, so it'll fit through this little hole, pull it out. You can access those four. Then you've got three along the bottom, and you've got four more around here, and that's going to take off the plate from the back of the engine over here. you got a little keyway that's in this shaft here, and the keyway will come out, and then you've got some spacers here. Just keep track of your spacers and which orientation they went. Um, and then only thing left to do is measure your mounting holes down here uh, to make sure it'll work. But so our Honda engine is a, I don't even know if it's going to show. It's a GX 390T. And I done some Googling and found that the three, the uh, Jesus, GX 390T, like you can't find them anymore. Um, I don't know if they're, well, I've heard Honda's not making, um, small engines anymore, but I don't know. I don't know. I know parts are like almost impossible to get. So yeah. Anyways. Um, so we're going to replace this with a Predator engine from Harbor Freight. Is it going to work a week and die? I, I don't know. I, I'm probably going to buy the warranty thing that they sell you just so if this thing takes a crap on me um, in the start of next season, I can just swap the Degum thing out. Um, but I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to film the rest of this, like putting it all back together. And of course, putting it together is going to be direct opposite of taking it apart. So if you watch the, you know, the put it together video backwards, you'll have everything you need in order to take it apart. Um, but yeah, so that that's what's that's what's going on with us. I've still got. Oh, we had water in our fuel. I'll show you this. I've got a pinhole in my bottle that I put it in. So I had to lean the bottle on the side. Can you see that separation there? There's actually, there's three layers to this and I don't know if I can get the camera at the right angle to show you. Eh, it's not really showing that well, but there's water and gas got mixed somehow or another in one of our blowers. I did a uh, Instagram post and showed where we were doing the uh, the test. There's uh, if you go to um, BG's website, 
get in touch with one of their reps. You can buy a, a gasoline, alcohol, and diesel fuel test kit. It's a super awesome kit. I've used it maybe four times, but it takes the guesswork out of testing your fuel. Um, you've got several beakers, or I don't know if they're really called beakers, but I'm going to call them beakers. You've got a couple beakers, uh, some hydrometers, and they're specifically made for testing fuel. So if you ever question about your fuel quality, you can always test it there uh, with that kit. So I, I don't know how much it is. I bought it when I was a technician. So um, can't tell you that. I'm not going to link it. You, you Google. Um, yeah. So um, you, you can do the same thing with a water bottle. Fill it up a quarter of the way with water. Fill it up halfway with gasoline. Mark it where the separation is. Shake the hell out of it. And then look and see if your water line is now higher than your where it was, and that'll kind of tell you. Um, you can also just pour water, or excuse me, gasoline into a mason jar or a clear jar or whatever, and just let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes and see where your separation is. You can tell that way. Cool thing about this tester is it gives you percentages, so you have a more accurate reading of what's going on. But anyways, <clears throat> so... We're going to go pick up one of those Predator engines tomorrow. We're going to put it on this debris loader, and we're already going to be way behind schedule. I really, really, really hope that this works and I can get this crew back working um, with a debris loader. Worst case scenario, tomorrow afternoon. If, if I can get the engine get it here, get it hooked up. Maybe I'll buy a little, like a motorcycle battery or something and put on there um, and just zip tie it to the side. I, I don't know. They're probably just going to have to hand bag leave tomorrow. I hate it for them. I really do. But so that's what's going on. And oof, I ventured out into the dark. Oh, and there is stuff all over the place out here. It is, I, you can't even see me. Um, it's dark out here. And none of my flashlights are charged. Tim left his water bottle in the truck. So, yeah. Um, anyways, just wanted to give you guys a quick video showing you the headaches of a small business owner small landscape business owner or at least what we have going on right now but that's what's up i'm gonna cut this video off i'll um i'll bring y'all back into the loop tomorrow maybe film putting everything back together getting the uh debris loader back on the trailer and hopefully making money. Well, y'all have a good night. I'm going home. No, I'm not. I got way more to do. Y'all have a good night. I'm going to finish working. And it's 945. Maybe I'll get home by midnight. All right. Peace. Love y'all.